Greetings everyone, let's say you've just splashed out a load of money on one of Canon's new APS-C mirrorless RF mount cameras, like the R10 or the R7, but you're such a Lord Snooty level money bags that you can't cope with whatever zoomable little kit lens it came with. Well, perhaps Canon's popular zoomable L lens could be the answer, everyone loves an L lens, the Canon RF 24-105mm f4 L lens has had a great reputation on full frame cameras ever since its EF mount ancestors hit the market. In fact, the latest RF mount version isn't that much sharper than the original models. How could it cope on an APS-C camera, especially one as demanding as the EOS R7, and how would it square up against Canon's new RFS 18-150mm kit lens? Should you upgrade to that famous F4L lens or stick with what you've got? We need to know, and I've taken a few hours out of my busy schedule to find out for you. On the left you see the RF 24-105mm F4L lens, and on the right the RFS 18-150mm kit lens. There are lots of similarities between the two lenses in some ways, both have excellent electronics with great autofocus motors and very steady image stabilisation. The first differences are totally obvious, despite having a far broader zoom range, the RFS 18-150mm lens is way smaller. That's because it's only designed to cover a camera with a smaller APS-C sized sensor, whereas the 24-105mm L lens is designed for full frame cameras and so needs to be much bigger. The 18-150mm is also way way lighter than the bigger L lens. Here's that zoom range in practice. As you can see, the 18-150mm starts at a far wider angle on the R7 camera than the 24-105mm does, and also it zooms in much much further, so if you decide to give the 24-105mm L lens a try on an APS-C camera, you'll be sacrificing a lot of zoom range and convenience here. But another reason the 24-105 is bigger is because it has a brighter aperture of f4 throughout its entire zoom range, which you'll particularly notice when you're zoomed in. Here you can see the difference at 105mm, the outer focus backgrounds of the 24-105mm L lens look much stronger than the 18-150mm kit lens at the same focal length, making it a better lens for portrait and subject photography, as well as for shooting in low light situations indoors or in the dark, and this is one of the key advantages to moving over to using this L lens, but admittedly it doesn't make a world of difference to your images. Some other advantages to the more expensive L lens is that it's weather sealed to help keep dust and moisture out of it, and it has slightly better build quality, as well as separate focus and control rings at the front. It also comes with its own lens hood, if that's something of importance to you. A disadvantage of the L lens is that its filter thread size of 77mm is way bigger than the 55mm size of the smaller 18-150mm lens, meaning your filters will be way more expensive should you choose to buy and use them. Overall, in terms of size and parameters, not to mention price, if you decide to fix this Canon L lens to your EOS R7 camera, then, well, you'll be making a major sacrifice to your portability and zoom range, although the maximum aperture you can work with of f4 will at least be brighter. Hmm, well, perhaps there'll be a big difference in image quality. Canon's 24-105mm f4 L lenses have always been fully intended for their bigger full frame cameras, but, They've never been slouches when I've tested them on APS-C cameras either, but then again none of those APS-C cameras were 32.5 megapixels in high resolution. The 24-105mm L lens is on the left, the 18-150mm lens on the right. I'll be comparing these two lenses here at the same focal lengths. If you want to see more image quality results from the 18-150mm lens, then check out my full review in the description down below, or check out my full review of the L lens too. At 24mm, both lenses from their maximum apertures look fairly sharp in the middle, although interestingly the 18-150mm kit lens seems to have a slight edge in resolution. In the image corners, the 18-150mm lens continues with that slight advantage. That advantage continues even if you stop the lenses down to f8. Interesting. 
Well, let's zoom in halfway to 60mm now. In the middle of the image, the Canon L lens's maximum aperture of f4 means it starts without the 18 to 150mm lens, that'll come back in a minute. In the middle, it is again only averagely sharp, and over in the corners, it's a little softer. Let's top down the L lens to f5.6 and also, at the same time, introduce the 18 to 150mm lens. The two lenses are performing about the same here in the corners. Although back in the middle, the 18 to 150 again carries just a slight advantage. Even stop down to f8, the 18 to 150 mm kit lens does seem just slightly, slightly sharper here. Finally, let's zoom all the way in. Well, for the L lens anyway, to 105 mm. At f4, again, the L lens is much brighter than the kit lens, so it gets a head start, and pleasingly, its image quality is still fairly good. Over in the corners though, the image is much softer. Let's top that L lens down to f5.6 and now introduce the 18 to 150 mm lens, whose maximum aperture is close at f6.3. Both lenses are softer in the corners, although the L lens is now showing a slight advantage, finally. Back in the middle, the L lens is very, very slightly sharper again, although the difference is barely distinguishable. Stop down to f8 and the L lens advantage is still there but slighter than ever, and over in the corners, neither lens looks especially impressive. So, overall, well, the L lens was originally intended for full frame cameras, where it does perform fantastically well. On a 32.5 megapixel crop sensor camera, well, that's just not one of its natural habitats, and so it doesn't really perform any better than the kit lens, interestingly. And you know what? That's all you really need to know at this point in the video. I could probably take you through a few more comparisons, but it's pretty conclusive now that there's little point in shelling out the dough for the 24-105mm f4L lens on a Canon EOS R7, unless you're absolutely desperate for that maximum aperture of f4 above anything else. Compared to the 18-150mm kit lens, the L lens's zoom range will be way smaller, it'll be big, bulky and expensive, and its image quality, realistically, no better. Let me be clear, none of that is a criticism of the L lens, no matter how it might sound. Really, it was simply designed for full frame cameras, not APS-C, and certainly on a full frame camera, it's a shining optic. Canon made it to offer good resolution across a full frame sensor rather than optimal resolution just in the middle. Whereas the RFS 18-150mm kit lens was built from the ground up for APS-C cameras, and that's all there is to it. Canon's L lenses are always amazing on full frame cameras, but on APS-C, well, you have to take them on a case by case basis. Well, there you go. I hope you found that interesting. You know, I have learned so much about the performance differences between full frame and APS-C cameras while testing lenses on this channel, and well, it's still sometimes a mystery to me. You have to take these lenses on a case by case basis all the time. If you found this video helpful, then check out the rest on my YouTube channel, particularly if you like the Canon EOS R7, as I'll be featuring a lot of videos about it in the near future, and how Canon's new RF mount lenses perform on it. Also, check out my Patreon page, there's a link in the description below, for more infos about how to support this channel, while also getting a whole load of extra bonus content. Ciao for now, everybody.